I think that news came out first, right? They were in San Sebastian. Uh, I th- yeah. I remember right. seeing that. I'm like, oh, who's this person? You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. I like, I like That's a big that. deal. Um, I certainly uh, noticed uh, um, mentions like that. So um, I came up with a secondary title for your film. It's called Brace for Impact. Tell me again. Uh, Brace for Impact. It's something that when you're in an airplane, they always remind you for that. And um, I think uh, just in the horizontally thing that I won't give away, it sort of makes sense for this. Um, yeah, I mean, I do tend to warn the audience before we screen, so maybe I should just uh, did you do that. Do this project because the other gender wouldn't give you necessarily permission for to make a film like this. It's interesting you say that because my whole kind of mission with this movie was to... to um, really hold back on the acting. Like there are only five actors in the movie, the rest are professional doctors and paramedics and nurses and so on. So coming from being an actress of 20 years, uh, no, I did not write this or you know uh, execute this to make it like an actor's movie. I think it became because uh, you know Peter Participate, yes. it off like she does an amazing acting performance. But in terms of the process up until shooting, you know, our mission, our main goal, and my mission the whole way was um, to to create a authentical situation as authentical as possible, mm-hmm. so that the actors would be able to uh, work with the formats, a real time take for ninety minutes, uh, and just be in the situation, not act like not, you know cut to redo the scene or do it better next time or just be in the situation old style Stanislavski acting you know Mm -hmm. Um, so no my intentions was were not close to pulling out the finest of an actor but I think watching it and watching Pia's performance that that is the kind of acting I love the most when it's just like organical Mm -hmm. free flowing yeah and when it's coming from places you've not decided where you're going to look and what you're going to say and how, but it's just... Uh, discuss the rapport between the viewer and this aesthetic choice. Um, if, it was, if the idea is to bridge the gap, um, we're not talking about performance now, but talking about um, that, um, that specific tool set and how... Mm-hmm. Are you thinking about the, the, that experience? Yeah, a lot. And I mean, there's been so many different layers. I think originally um, it was really important for me to use this format, the real-time take, in order to keep a sober gaze on the theme. You know, mm-hmm. I promised the psychiatrist I'm cooperating with um, in this project to um, communicate hope, to communicate soberness, to not glorify, to not dramatize more and so on. So, um, the, you know, the mission was not deliberately to create a, an intimacy with the audience, but more for me as a sender to be responsible with the theme, yeah. the subject that I was communicating. Yeah. Then I think a, a consequence of the method was the intimacy, and you know, in the process of making it, I was afraid that people would think it was boring, or it was going to be slow, or it was going to be, you know. But for me personally, watching movies, I mean, I have this long time inspiration going on with Lynn Ramsey, Lynn Ramsey, and and a lot of her, I think, breaks and pauses with her characters where I really relate, where I really kind of discover the human being in her in her pictures yeah um, and so that's to a layer of why I chose this method because I love to walk you know with a picture on the neck of the girls and I love to just see a side of a cheek or you know like a knee or something the parts you 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 throw away the yeah to. so that was another layer Another reason to work with this format. I, I mean, I love working with this format for so many reasons, but especially most of all for the subject of the movie, mm-hmm. mental illness. It was important not to romanticize, which I think score does or editing does. Or you know, we don't have any score. We don't have any editing. Um, but yeah, there are various other reasons too. 
yeah, strip away the the confetti and the decor and, and get to the to the truth of the yeah. of the character and the truth of the the, the the story. You know, and in a way, I think for me, it was liberating too because, like you point out, you kind of get to the core of the story of storytelling. Mm-hmm. Like you're, that's what you're doing during the half one half hours you're executing the movie. There are no other tools to use. You're yeah. doing it right there. You're, you're gliding without a uh, parachute. You know, it's very uh, rewarding and liberating. Or... Yeah, but it was that way for the actors as well. Yeah, yeah for everyone. It was, it was kind of the, it became the essence, the core of acting. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, because it was, because it was not about different kind of tricks. For you, what's or, what's an equivalency of, of, of this uh, modus apparatus like would st- working on the stage be the closest thing to filming in conditions like this no not really because working on the stage um, it, of course I think our experience from working on stage was good yeah because we are we are able to think uh, and to keep our concentration for a very long time. Yeah. You know, it's okay, it's two hours from when you begin until you finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think both me and Anders and the other actors work a lot in theater, so we have that kind of muscles. Yes. Where, but what I mean by the essence of acting was just what you're talking about. It was, was, it was through, through living it mm-hmm. and not acted they're not playing it yeah. because uh, in theater you can you can act whatever because you have a lot of techniques you have eight or ten weeks to rehearse you can dissipate the script into small little pieces and you can decide this little turn this hair this hair and then I go here but this format and this this type of story and way of telling it uh, just demanded to go all the way into yeah. into the core of everything you went into the psychology of the situation and I was uh, I was almost uh, shocked to, to see how um, the institution of the idea of a hospital setting and how much how much pain and suffering is absorbed yeah. there what kind of research did you um, did you go about for 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 this? I mean, in terms of the script, I wrote the script and then I immediately kind of contacted every level of, you know, uh, hospital worker to just make sure that everything was in order. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's important for me that they were seen in this movie as well and that they were, you know, fairly de- depicted in a way that they could recognize because a part of the the subject matter of mental illness for me was to communicate again suicide prevention or preventative methods and so on and they are trained to do this and mm-hmm. it's a very important part for me to do that research properly so that we communicate the right things um, but but having done that on the script level then when you come to shooting with a real trauma team or with a real paramedic team or with a real you know whatever they were nurses and so on yeah. you know, psychiatrists and so on it kind of just happens anyway, you know. I put a lot of work into the script mm-hmm. because I'm using real professional doctors. They're just doing what they they would normally do in a day of work, you know. So yes, lots of research, but also working with professional uh, hospital workers. Yeah, we needed so much research because mm-hmm. they were just doing mm-hmm. what they were doing. Mm-hmm. You know? What I what I particularly liked about uh, Blind Spot is the the deliberate lack of a backstory, um, and um, the motivations. Um, I, I like how you follow your early protagonist. Um, so that's the daughter character at the very beginning stages, and how it's very mundane her world, her existence, but it says so much about how she got to the point that she gets to. Uh, again, I don't want to spoil anything here. Um, so I was wondering, um, what was the importance for for commencing your film in a place like that? Well, we had loads of discussion in terms of the the, the guilt or the blame that relatives or friends or families to uh, cases of severe mental illness usually experience, mm-hmm. 
and for me it was very important not to dig into that mm -hmm. because I don't I, this isn't an examination of why I mean we all know that it's impossible to explain why someone um, ends up so isolated that they feel they want to commit suicide um, we don't there's no answers to that and, and so uh, but having said that that was my personal you know uh, way into the material mm -hmm. but the experts on the other side like the psychiatrists and the suicide prevention people and so on that I'm working with they were all kind of trying to make me go more into the not guilt but responsibility issue mm -hmm. that we as a surrounding families friends um, teachers schoolmates you know we have responsibility yeah which scared me because I you know that's a fine line of going you know are we all going to feel guilty now that we didn't see our friends you know but what they were trying to say which I learned from this project I think all of us did was um, to learn other signs to learn to detect uh, mental illness for, with other tools you know mm -hmm. you, we have learned that mental illness is one thing but it can be so many things it could be a smiley seemingly happy content girl of 14 you know yeah that suffers inside because yeah. we're taught to be, you know, the smiley faces. So that was a deliberate choice from my side to not go into backstory yeah. on a dramatic level. I know it's like, you know, maybe I, I lacked on that uh, in that sense, but it was important for me because I didn't want to go into blame or guilt. What I like, uh, what I like about the the film is that there's this uh, again a, um, a sort of parallel paradox between this inwardly sufferance and and um and outwardly gestures and that's where the mother sort of like they reflect on the mistakes that she's done very verbally and and pointed towards the uh, the other character set and that's I, I sort of loved that play that juggling of of okay well this is how it looks like physically but it could also look like that physically which is it's hard to detect so um um I'm glad you saw that. <laughs> <laughs>